Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to my channel and in today's video we'll try to uh, study or we'll try to have a look on the first rule of converting a non-exact first order ordinary differential equation commonly known as ODE into an exact form. Okay, so we are going to going to cover here the first rule of non-exact first order ODE. So what exactly this is, like if you are having, for instance, I'm just trying to write in general, that if you're having a first order ODE that looks something like this, okay? And you just try to figure out that it could be uh, an exact differential equation it could be a total differential equation so this might be if you are having some kind of function f of x like this then this would be the partial derivative of this f with respect to x and this could be I'm using could be all right I'm not saying this is okay and this could be uh, the partial derivative of this function f with respect to y okay th this could be so we have to confirm whether this is really the partial derivatives of this function with respect to x and y so what we do we just try to find out that if your partial derivative if you further take out the derivative of this m function or fx f sub x with respect to y okay and partial derivative of this f sub y which is actually your n if we try to differentiate this with respect to x and they should be equal then because this is exactly this that you express like this okay and this is something this that you express by this okay so we are having a, a very exhaustive theorem while while studying the partial uh, differential equations so over there we study that uh, the double derivative of this function first with respect to x then respect to y is equal to the double double derivative of this function first with respect to y then with, with respect to x means the order of the independent variable does not change the value of the so differentiated function okay that we so obtain what I mean so if they are not equal if they are equal the equation is exact but if they are not equal then the equation is said to be non-exact in nature they appear to be like this but they are not satisfying this condition then this is a non-exact first order ODE so we have to convert it into an exact form for that purpose what we do we just introduce here an integrating factor okay we introduce here a certain integrating factor which once when we multiply with this throughout equation then the equation will be turned into an exact form and then we are trying we will just try to evaluate it and try to find out the exact value of function which is which behaves at its solution okay so there are basically four uh, rules of finding out the integrating factors depending on the nature of the non-exact ODE. So over here in this video, we are going to discuss here the rule one or the first rule. Okay, so what exactly the first rule is? The first rule of integrating factor, finding the integrating factor is what? Like if you just try to find out that if this equation which is non-exact if it is satisfying this condition that you just find out your my because you know that this is actually your my okay but this was your m and then you s differentiate with respect to y you could you, you can call this thing as your my in the same way this is your n you differentiate with respect to x this is your nx okay so once when you calculate these two things and you just perform this action if you do this and you are getting some function which is just 
with respect to x, you can express this function as p as well, as convention conventionally we use p here for the integrating factor. So this is it. So if you just get this, then after that what you do, you just perform a derivative and then you solve it out, get the integrating factor which is represented by nu here, then multiply this integrating factor with this non-exact differential equation throughout, it will turn into exact and then just solve out by performing all the, ex uh, all the three steps of that we perform in uh, solving the exact differential equation. So we have to convert this thing into an exact form by using this integrating factor which is so obtained through this method. So in order to go more deeply, we just try to excise an example here. So here you go the example. Okay, so now we are having here a nice example. So this is the question. And you can see that it looks something it looks something exact like, okay, but we cannot confirmly say whether it is really exact or not. We first have to check this thing out. So this is actually your fx dx, and this is your fy dy. That's what exactly it means. So is it really the case? Is this really, is this thing really f sub x? Is this thing really f sub y? We have to check this thing out. So what we do, we just differentiate this first mxy looking thing with respect to y. Okay. Sorry, it's minus 2x. It's 2y squared. And it is these things will behave at a constant here because we are just differentiating this thing with respect to y. So all the terms with respect to x behave at a constant here and the derivative of constant is zero. These two terms will give you zero derivatives. And this thing is going to give you 4y. So that's what you call your x. Uh, I'm sorry, it's y. All right? So this can also be written as my, all right? Now in the same way, and now differentiate this n term or nxy looking thing with respect to your x, okay? So it's 2xy. So here 2y will behave as a constant thing written outside because of your x. So it simply give you 2y, all right? And this is what you call your nx, okay? So you can see that your m sub y is not equal to your n sub x. So in other words, you can also say that your fxy is not equal to your fyx, okay? So this equation, which which we thought it would be exact. It is actually not exact, okay? We have to convert it into exact uh, ODE4. We have to first find out the uh, integrating factor. So you see that, let us try to apply the first rule here, that after applying the first rule, are we getting a function involving simply x or not? So using your first rule, rule one, say we are using this rule here it says that once when you perform this action you should get some function with respect to x only so let us see so it is giving you 4y and this is giving you 2y pun this thing is n is your 2xy, so we just write over here. It's 2xy. So this thing gives me 2y upon 2xy. So in solving, you're getting 1 upon x. So you see, this thing is giving you simply 1 upon x. So this is some function involving simply x. We just call it p. 
okay you can keep it you can go along with the g of x as well it's up to you but i'm used to of using p here that's why i'm using it so now what we do we know that our integrating factor is represented by mu here so we say that the derivative of integrating factor with respect to over x is actually mu times over p this is the rule first rule and presently we are not discussing the proof of this rule we are simply using the, the, method, the methodology or the technique of this rule all right so over here you can say that your p is 1 upon x so it looks something like this now we can sort out this thing with the help of our method of separating variable all right so it can be written something like this okay we're swapping the things here and there and then you perform some nice integration at both sides in this way, you're going to get your integrating factor mu, okay? All right, so this thing is giving you ln of mu. This is giving you ln of x, okay? And you might be having some constants over here and here. So we are just neglecting those const uh, constants right now. Once when you perform exponential at both sides, right after this step, you are going to get something like this. Though you can directly cancel out the LNs at both sides, but I'm just trying to be a bit exhaustive here. So the antiderivative of the natural log will cancel the natural log in power, and you are simply going to have this left. Okay, so this is your integrating factor. You, can, you should now hear one more thing, that integrating factor is also a bivariate function and presently it is expressed just in terms of x okay so because this entire equation is bivariate that's why the integrating factor is also going to be bivariate but actually it is expressed just with respect to the one variable now integrating factor has just been explored now we are going to multiply this factor entirely with this non-exact differential equation and then we just try to figure it out and find its solution so let's multiply this equation with our x so let's see what we get okay so this is it and this thing will definitely be zero and nothing more than that so this is giving me x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2xy squared dx plus 2x square y dy equals to zero and now we are going to compare it once again with our exact general form general form of exact equation what i mean so if this is your f of x uh, f sub x and this is your f sub y that we call by n and m so let us try to find out, differentiate this m function with respect to y. These two terms are definitely, I'm sorry, it's, I'm sorry, it's x squared. So these two are simply involving x, these two terms are simply involving x, so they will become zero obviously, and we are having here 4xy, okay? Now differentiate this n thing with respect to x. It's 2x squared y, so two y's outside x square it gives me 2x so to multiply with y 2y it gives me 4xy okay so now we can see that these two things are equal or f of x y equals to f sub yx 
now this equation has been reduced or have been converted into exact form this is it now this is done let's let us just highlight it this is the exact first order ODE now now we have to simplify it by following all three steps of the exact uh, ordinary differential equation that we studied in the previous video you can see the link in the description box below so you have to apply all those strategies three strategies there so though I'm not in mood to apply all those strategies I'm just willing to write the answer directly but still my nature is not letting me do it so let us apply the steps now here for the exact equation so step number one was what this is our m this is our n okay this is our m this is our n so what we do we just diff uh, so m was what m was actually your f sub x and this was actually your f sub y okay after confirming from here we can confidently assert this is the f sub x and this is your f sub y so what we do we can also express this m like this so m can also be expressed like this okay so we have to find the value of f we have to find the function actually we have to find f what we do we are going to integrate both sides with respect to x in order to get our f and just get rid from this partial differential operator so we are going to apply integration here with respect to dx and in this integration though uh, you can see it is an indefinite integration so the constant is over here we are going to take it at the function of y okay so this is our f so left and this is going to be right like this this is going to be your x power of 4 on 4 minus 2 q upon 3 plus 2x square y square upon 2 plus some constant and over here the constant is something like this okay because we know that the derivative if we are differentiating anything with respect to x and all the terms involving simply y will behave with a constant so we were not having the derivatives if we were having derivative of y term zero so that's how and once, once when we perform the anti-derivative we are getting the function y back so the constant was giving us this all right we just call it equation number one here now in the next step and you can see this is cancelled so f is i think i better call this equation as my one this is the simplified form so i just call this equation as my one instead of this okay so this is it now what we have to do now you just differentiate we have to find the value of h of y actually so we just differentiate both sides with respect to our y now so I'm not just writing the wordings here, but you should do while performing the action. So. This is it, and you know that this is your n. Okay, these two terms will give you zero, and this will give you two y x squared. plus the derivative of this thing all right so you can see here that n was over here 2x square y so you just substitute this thing 2x square y equals 2x square y oh my both sides are equal it means your h prime y will be zero h prime y will be zero here so now we have to find h prime y h of y so now we just integrate both sides with respect to our what with respect to our y okay so once when we integrate
we get h of y equals to zero. This is it. So now, once h of y is so uh, explored, it is zero. So we just now put our, the value of your h y over here. This is going to give you the function final form, which is the solution. So. So square y squared. So this is the solution of the non-exact differential equation that was later converted into exact form and then it is simplified and we just got the respective function, the solution of this thing. Okay viewers, so this is all for today. Uh, I hope uh, that the concept of converting your non-exact ODE into exact form by using the first rule is somewhat clear to you. And I hope this example will help you out in getting the concept more deeper, uh, more deep. So if you find this video helpful, I humbly request you to subscribe my channel, hit on the like, hit on the bell icon, and don't forget to write your feedback in the comment box below. And you can also find the relevant uh, things related to the uh, or first order ordinary differential equations in the description box you can view those links if you want to that will help you out a lot and i'll see you next time with the second rule of the same topic okay take good care of yourself allah hafiz